Okay, in this segment I want to solve two questions. One question will be from the air conditioning slash refrigerator, refrigeration, okay? Um, and the second one will be for the heat pump because there's a slight difference between the two in terms of the final end goal for me, okay? Let's start with the air conditioning one. Also, you can use this uh, as a refrigerator, same thing. And our conditioner removes heat from an office building at a rate of 80 kilowatts, now the power is given. If the coefficient of performance of this air conditioning is 2.2, find the electric power input required, find the heat transfer to the surrounding air in two hours. Okay. So before I start, I want to simply go ahead and revisit the, the cycle that I have so that you know I know what I'm working on. That this kind of helps me personally. QL, QH, and I have a W net in over here. Okay. And what is given to me is this time around it is given in power, so I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna be queued up, right? 80 kilowatts. Let's double check whether this is uh, correct. And your conditioner is heat from office building at a rate of. See, we have to understand how the air conditioning work, whether to say that this is QL or QH. Remember, this is the low temperature one. It's very hot outside. It's the low temperature. I'm removing this much from inside the room, okay? So QL dot is given as 80 kilowatts, okay? And also, Coefficient of performance, and is this a heat pump or is this a refrigerator? It's a refrigerator, okay? As I mentioned, the goal is to remove heat from already a cool place, okay? And that is defined as basically Q dot L. Let's write with respect to dot, so W dot net in. That's what it was. This was my output. This is what I want in as an output. This is the input that I have to pay for it, okay? And this is given as, well, 2.2. That's given the question, okay? So you can see right off the bat over here, so this is pretty good. So I have 80 kilowatts divided by W dot net in is equal to 2.2. So from here, I will get W dot net in as basically 80 kilowatts by 2.2, right? So W dot net in is 36.36 .36 kilowatts, okay? Um, okay, so that's the answer to part A, isn't it? It's asking electric power input. So I have to consume 36.36 .36 kilowatts in order to make this happen. You know, I want to highlight uh, something to you. So I am uh, paying 36.36 .36 kilowatts. But from my room, the energy that's removed is 80 kilowatts. Do you see what I mean? That's why the coefficient of performance is more than one. So it's like a magic from that angle, okay? Let's read to the second one. Heat transfer to the surrounding air. So it's asking heat transfer to surrounding air. So this is the ambient uh, air, which is warmer than my room. It's asking about QH, but this is asking on over two hours. So it's asking in terms of the joules, right? Again, it seems easy when I do it, but be careful. Please read your question carefully and do it yourself so that you can understand what the question is asking you, okay? Let's start with finding this Q dot H. Um, you know, in order to do that, I will write this W dot net in, that's how I memorize myself, um, is equal to Q dot H minus Q dot L, so from here Q dot H will be W net in dot plus Q dot L, and I know both of them, W dot net in is 36.36 .36 kilowatts plus um, 80 kilowatts is Q dot L, so I get in here 116.36 kilowatts, that is my Q dot H. But the question is not asking Q dot H, it is asking about how much over two hours. So what it means is, as you know, I usually go with, uh, you know, QH, or rather this definition was, do you remember? QH per unit time, okay? Um, and this is seconds if I use SI. And remember, this is watts, this is joule per second, okay? So this is BTU per hour, this is BTU, this is hours if I'm using the British gravitational. So I simply will go now this way around, right? So I will multiply these two to get my QH. I can do that. QH will be Q dot H times the time, okay? Q dot H is 116.36 kilowatts. So kilowatts is joule per second. So then over two hours, uh, one hour is 3600 seconds, isn't it? Seconds per hour. And I have two hours. Right, so let's see the units wise. This ends up with uh, you know it's pretty good. So I get myself a multiply these eight hundred thirty seven 
um, 7.92 kilojoules or I get 837.8 mega joules, isn't it? So you can see in here, in reality, the AC is on in every single house that are around me now. So now you can see that, uh, you know, this is how much for each, uh, over two hours only, is we are dumping to the atmosphere, okay? So that's called uh, thermal pollution, if you don't know what the name for it is, okay? All right, so that's going to do it for me for this first question. So let me do the second one. This is a heat pump. Is this questions for uh, simple, so I'm doing two of them, okay? A heat pump produces 2,000 BTU per minute. So now I'm using the British Gravitational just to illustrate how it's used. Heating effect while drawing 25 horsepower of power. Okay. Find the coefficient of performance for the heat pump and energy observing rate from the surrounding air. Okay. Again, I want to draw this because I want to know what is what. It's asking absorption rate from surrounding air. What, what does it even mean? Okay. This is TL. I have a heat pump. It is very similar to refrigeration. Well, this is a refrigeration cycle. It's very similar to AC or refrigerator. Okay, W net in. I'm paying for it, and this is QL, right? So now, if I look at it, the how? The, let, let me explain. So this is my room now. Okay, it's in the winter. Outside is cold. I'm running the AC in reverse, basically. Okay, so this is what I have in my room. This is outside air, and I am, you know, plugging into the uh, wall outlet my uh, heat pump which consumes a lot of power typically right and what is going to happen is my room is going to get even further more warmer and warmer which is what I want for comfort right so that's what it is okay so now let's write the COP of a heat pump again the goal is to have the highest QH possible and what I need to pay in is this is it W net in okay okay so also, let's look at the question. A heat pump produces a heating effect. So it is talking about this QH, right? Um, and you can imagine this is Q dot H, right? Because BTU is the unit of uh, energy divided by time is the power. So this is power, okay? Q dot H is given as 2000 BTU per minute, okay? And W dot, dot nin, net in is also given as 25 horsepower. You can clearly see there needs to be some kind of a conversion over here, right? And I'm going to write you the conversion 2544.5 BTU per hour is equal to 1 horsepower, okay? So what I want to now do is convert everything to BTU per hour because that seems the common unit. So if I do it, COP of the heat pump will be Q dot H. Q dot H is uh, 2000, but that is I consume 2,000, or rather I gain 2,000 BTU per minute. So over an hour then, I'm going to gain this much. This is, you know, let's write units BTU per minute. There's 60 minutes in an hour. So you can see minutes cancel. I get BTU per hour, which is good. What about the denominator? That is 25 horsepower. And each, horse, and each horsepower is 2544.5 BTU per hour. Okay, so this is HP and I have BTU per hour per horsepower, right? Horsepower is cancelled, I get myself BTU per hour at the numerator and denominator. So I'm doing something right. When I plug this into my calculator, I get myself 1.87, okay? That is the coefficient of performance for the heat pump that I have. Okay, that's part A. And that's the absorption rate from the surrounding air. Oh yeah, it's asking about this QL, isn't it? It's asking rate, so Q dot L. Q dot L is about is that. This is the ambient air. This is the room, right? So it's asking for Q dot L. That doesn't sound that difficult because I know this from first law that W net in. Again, I said I memorize it this way. It's up to you how you want to memorize it. Q dot H minus Q dot L, right? Um, okay, so Q dot H was 120,000, right? Um, up there. This is the numerator, right? Um, what about W dot in? So I, I know this. This is 25 times 2544.5, right? That is again B2 per hour minus Q dot L. And from here, it's a simple math. And you do it. I got myself 56,387 BTU per hour. So this is how much uh, available power that I'm pulling from the outside ambient. Air. Okay, 
All right, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you for watching the segment.